Hello and welcome to today's webinar. I'm extremely excited to be able to present for the very first time a webinar on this topic. My name is Albert Meroquin and I'm the Vice President of Electrical Safety and Dynamics Engineering Divisions here at ETAP. Today, I would like to talk to you guys about IEEE 1584-2018 Draft D6 Guide for Performing Arc Flash Hazard Calculations. The next revision of this guideline has taken more than 15 years. The work for this standard started more than a decade ago and now it nears its completion and the standard is very close to its release by IEEE. I've had the opportunity to participate for the last five years in the development and validation of the new ArcFlash model. I'm extremely grateful for the opportunity that Mr. Dalip Mula, who is the chair of IEEE 1584, gave me by allowing me to participate so actively in the development and validation of the standard. Today, I would like to share with you some of the background, some of the history, and some of the information related to how to apply this new ArcFlash model using Power System Analysis software. In this webinar, I'm hoping to be able to give you a, an overall quick historical description of the process of the research and the model development. It is important to understand the research and its scope in order to understand the range of application of the new IEEE 1584-2018 D6 ArcFlash model. After I provide the insights into the model development and validation process, I would also like to share with you or describe to its, two of its major capabilities, which are the arc current behavior and the enclosure size correction factors. Of course, the arc current being the key factor to determine the arc fold duration or the operating time of other current protective devices and the correction factor being important for a more accurate thermal energy calculation. After we discuss the basic fundamental model behavior for the arc current and the incident energy, I would also like to provide a brief description on how the new arc flash guide handles some of the previous concepts such as the effect of equipment grounding configuration and at what voltage and short circuit current combinations the new low voltage exception has been set to. Furthermore, I would like to spend some time providing my best interpretation on what I consider is the most critical step in the application of this guide, which is the classification or identification of the electrode configurations in actual equipment. I will, ask, I will follow that with uh, an example of how to apply the new ArcFlash model in Power System Analysis software using our new ETAP version, which will be released pretty soon. And last, I would like to introduce some of the tools which support the new ArcFlash model, and in particular, show you the new IEEE 1584 2018 arc flash calculator. First, uh, I would like to go over the arc flash phenomena research and tests which were done by the IEEE and, and an FBA collaboration effort which was started more than 10 years ago and which was managed by Dr. Wei Jing Li of the University of Texas Arlington and how this new research and testing resulted in a collection of almost 2,000 tests which were used to develop the new model. The IEEE 1584 2018 model tests included over 1800 tests of which nearly 800 plus were directly selected to be part of the final model development. In comparison, the IEEE 1584 2002 model was developed with a little less than 300 tests. Testing took place at five different labs, which included the SNC, Cooper, 
PG&E, Mersenne, and Kinectric facilities. The tests included six different electrode configurations, out of which only five were used to develop the final ArcFlash model. The tests were aimed at, at improving the accuracy of the simulation of arc flash events at different voltage levels with different conductor gaps, different short circuit current levels, and enclosure sizes. The, the new testing was also done to be able to provide additional information which was missing from the previous 2002 models and also as a respond of several IEEE papers which showed that there were inconsistencies or gaps in terms of electrical configurations which could yield higher thermal incident energy results when present in the electrical equipment. This chart is a summary of the testing performed for each configuration. The new ArcFlash model covers um, BCB, which stands for vertical conductors in a box, BCBB for vertical conductors in a box terminating in an insulating barrier, HCB, which stands for horizontal conductors in a box or enclosure, and VOA, which stands for horizontal conductors in open air followed by the HOA, which stands for Horizontal Conductors in Open Air. Note that each electrode configuration was tested across a voltage range between approximately 200, 208, 215 volts to a maximum voltage range approximately of 15 kV. The short circuit current for low voltage included tests with full current as high as 80 kA. The medium voltage tests included full current values as high as 65 kiloamps. The tests shown in this table were also supplemented. And that's one very important item to understand is that we reused in the model development and validation some of the information collected from the previous round of laboratory tests which were performed for the development of the IEEE 1584-2002 model. In the 2002 tests, there were also tests which included high current uh, setups with full current levels going as high as 106,000 amps. Last, we can see that during the model development, a sixth configuration was also present in the mix. However, due to the lack of uh, additional tests, resources, and uh, development time, the final configuration called HCB with the CT tubes on inside of the enclosure was omitted from the final model development. That configuration is considered to be outside the scope of this presentation. I have been participating with IEEE 1584 as a working group member for the past 12 years and followed it for the previous five years before that, getting involved in the software development. So I'm pretty familiar with all the presentations and all the videos and all the information that has been provided over the years uh, on the model development process. So I hope that with a few images, I can at least broadly explain the electrical configurations and how the tests perform aimed at collecting the information needed to develop the model. The image on the left side of this slide represents the test setup at the core of the IEEE 1584 2002 model. This particular electrode configuration existed and is handled currently by the, the 2002 model. Note that the electrodes are open tipped and are placed inside the enclosure at a certain depth within the open front end of the test enclosure or box. The image at the right shows a similar configuration with vertical electrodes, but this time around, the electrodes are not open-tipped, but terminated very closely at the bottom with an insulating barrier. This electric configuration, in my personal opinion, is perhaps the one that will influence a larger amount of calculation changes, since as we will see in later slides, it is a very common uh, configuration within actual equipment.
Next, uh, we can see that both of these images reflect what we call open air conditions. The one image on the left shows the existing vertical open air configuration, uh, which was also tested in the 2002 ArcFlash model. The configuration on the right hand side uh, is a new configuration which was added to the IEEE 1584 2018 model and it's called HOA and it shows a clear orientation in the direction of the calorimeters which in actual equipment would represent a person in front of this open tipped electrodes uh, setup and that electrodes will be pointing directly at the person itself. So in essence, we are noticing that the R column plasma molecular cloud all will be driven by the magnetic fields generated along the conductors and all those elements, superheated gases and plasma will be pushed towards the calorimeters where in real life a person could be standing. This will significantly increase the instant energy or thermal energy transfer to the person and therefore the HOA configuration is expected to yield higher incident energy when compared to the vertical open air test that we're all familiar with. Next, this slide shows a rendering of the horizontal conductors in a box configuration, which is new also in the IEEE 1584-2018 model. Um, and this configuration is expected to yield the highest incident energy uh, measurements since uh, not only is the plasma being projected and interrupted towards the front of the box, but it is also concentrated at the radiation part of the energy is also being reflected by the effect of the enclosure surrounding the electrodes. As we can see, we have the enclosure, the electrodes pos positioned horizontally and all the plasma in our columns would expand and the plasma would go directly towards the calorimeters placed in front. So similar to the horizontal open air configuration, the presence of the box around will take some of the radiated heat and reflect it back towards the front of the calorimeters. This configuration may be less common, but if present in actual equipment, it may yield the highest energy flux per second and an arc current with lower magnitude than that of the vertical conductors in a box configuration. The lower current could significantly compound the issue because lower currents can yield higher operating times in overcurrent protected devices and therefore create a larger calculated incident energy value especially when you compare to the existing BCB configuration from the 2002 model. This slide shows the actual plasma and the molecular cloud flows as in a snapshot during different arc flash events uh, within different configurations. The vertical open air configuration, which is shown in the middle, shows the plasma reflected and directed towards the bottom and away from the calorimeters. The image on the left shows the actual air, uh, actual arc, I'm sorry, in a horizontal open air configuration. And as we can see, and we previously mentioned, the arc columns, the molecular cloud, and the superheated uh, ionized gases are pushed towards the calorimeters, therefore creating a higher ra radiation and convective heat transfer towards the calorimeters, which would represent an actual person standing in front of the equipment. On the right, we see an image of an enclosure already engulfed in an arc flash event. This configuration is meant to be the vertical conductor in a box configuration and as we can see the plasma is mostly concentrated towards the bottom of the enclosure and because of the barrier effect 
the columns, the, the gases, the molecular cloud, all gets concentrated and sh ejected out tangentially away from the electroplane. This would cause a higher amount of energy transfer towards the calorimeter's place in front. One thing to note, and as we will understand in the next sections of this webinar, is that the actual direction and the actual length of the arc columns as they expand or are compacted inside the enclosures will have a significant effect on the actual magnitude of the arc fault current which is measured. And in, of course, in real life equipment, that will be the actual current that will flow through the electrical circuits and the overcurrent protected devices. These variations in the magnitude of the fault current can either make protected devices operate perhaps faster or perhaps slower than the predictions of the 2002 model. Next, I would like to spend a very brief uh, period of time to describe the process of the model development and validation. Of course, the reason we're here is to actually learn about how the model uh, simulates the incident energy in our current. However, it is also important to understand the nature of the model and how it was validated so that we can gain a confidence level on the results that we're going to get from this new model. The 2018 arc flash model is empirical. However, um, expected arc flash physical behavior was also factored into the model development to prevent it from having abnormal behavior like its predecessor did in some cases. Example of previous abnormal behavior of the 2002 model um, include conditions under which the model could even predict the arc current being higher than the corresponded voltage short circuit current. This was definitely eliminated and corrected as part of the 2018 model. We also have conditions which show no effect of the gap on the arc current for the majority of the model range on the current and several other aspects of the old 2002 model which were all corrected uh, on this model. So to summarize this slide, basically the new uh, testing and the new model corrected a lot of the problems and it also is not only based on the test results but it's also based on the expected physical behavior of electrical arcs. The model validation process uh, can be summarized very simply into four stages. Uh, the review of the data processing and model creation methods. This is the stage in which the model data processing and how the model was created was reviewed by peers with uh, different levels of expertise, members of the IEEE 1584 working group. Um, the second stage involved the creation of prototype validation tools which were used to sip through this uh, complex model and be able to uh, validate it. Also, uh, another phase of the validation process was the establishment of the model performance metrics or otherwise called items called benchmarks. The benchmarks included uh, iterative comparisons of the model output against the actual test results. Uh, the model validation process also included comparisons against the 1584-2002 model. And of course, as I mentioned already, uh, the factoring of the expected arc physical behavior was also added into the mix in this model development. The very last stage, stage four, is actually very, very important because this is a stage in which the 1584 working group members assigned to this task uh, decided to limit or describe the model of application of this model, which is something very important, especially when the model is applied in power system analysis software. Now, we can talk a little bit about the range of the IEEE 1584-2002 model, uh, which is the result of the last stage of the model development and validation process. The final range of the model is summarized in these tables. The model significantly increased the gap length 
from 152 millimeters maximum gap to 254. The model also handles new electric configurations, as we already mentioned at the beginning of the presentation. However, the voltage short circuit current range is still similar to that of the IEEE 1584-2002 model, uh, with a maximum value of 106,000 amps. Note that also that the new arc flash model range is also improved since it defines individual current and conductor gap limits for low and medium voltage parts of the model. Note that unlike the previous model, the low voltage part of the model threshold is at 600 volts. The 2002 model threshold between low and medium voltage was set at 1000 volts. The new model also comes with a range of enclosure sizes which are integrated as parameters into the model. The height, the width, and the depth of the enclosures are now part of the model and they will have an effect on the incident energy. And this is something that we will discuss in a few minutes in this uh, webinar. Every one of these new limits will be included within the power system analysis software and then as you use this model and you apply it in using ETAP, the program will ab absolutely provide immediate feedback if any of the parameters falls outside the range of the application of this model. The enclosure sizes for IEEE 1584-2002-2018 uh, method. We basically can see that there's a total of six enclosures which were used for the development of this model. Of course, the larger enclosures were used for medium voltage and the smaller enclosures were used for low voltage. So the simulation results are more accurate when similar enclosure sizes are used as described in this table. However, the model allows the opening area to vary from 20 by 20 inch, so that's the opening front end of the enclosure, towards a maximum value of around 49 by 49 inch. Um, and this is for the medium voltage part of the model. Bottom line, what this table says is that if you have enclosures with similar sizes in the medium voltage range, your results will tend to be more accurate. And if you have low voltage equipment with enclosure sizes similar to the ones listed in the table, you also expect higher accurate results. But the model can handle larger boxes in low voltage equipment or smaller boxes in medium voltage equipment. Since we are talking about the range of application, what happens if we fall outside the range? Well, there is something that is actually particularly exciting to me since I've had to deal with uh, the repercussions of previous recommendations made in the IEEE 1584-2002 standard. In particular, to the application of the Lee method for voltage levels above 15 kV. Well, in the IEEE 1584-2018 guideline, there is no more Lee method recommendation. Instead of that, we have the following recommendation. And let me read it for you guys. There are alternative calculation methods for system parameters which fall outside the range of the model. However, no particular recommendation can be made since there are other application details such as voltage fault current levels, voltage, gap length, operating frequency, number of phases, types of faults. The user is advised to properly research alternative calculation methods and their application viability. This is a very important verbiage in the guideline because it basically opens the door for any calculation method that is deemed to be accurate and applicable for applications which fall outside the range of IEEE 1584. The previous recommendation on the Lee method has brought on many consequences, including OSHA 1910-269 adding sp specific language about the Lee method not being suitable for the application above 15 kV. Next, I would like to talk about the arc current model and the arc current variation correction factor in the new IEEE 1584-2018 guideline. First, I'd like to introduce this chart, which is 
a chart that represents the arcing current as a function of the operating system voltage. First, we'll see that we have the plots that represent the arc current results of the IEEE 1584-2002 model. Note that these plots represent the arc current for a 20 kiloamps, 19 millimeter gap arc flash event. As we can see, using these highlighted uh, plots, the model has a particular behavior highlighted in this particular curves. The important things that I would like you to note in this particular chart is the available bolted fault current value, which is 20,000 amps, represented by this dotted red plot. You will notice that at one point in time, roughly at approximately 690 volts or higher, that the old 2002 R flash model would predict that the magnitude of the arc current would be higher than the system available short circuit current, which we understand is not possible. Next, I'd like to show the results or the curves or the family of curves that represent the arc current for the IEEE 1584 2018 model. On top, we see the results for the BCBB configuration. And as expected, this configuration yields consistently the highest magnitude of R current. On the lower end of the spectrum, we have the HOA configuration, or the horizontal open air case, which consistently yields the lowest. This is expected physical behavior because in the open air case, we know that the arc columns will expand to longer lengths and therefore creating higher resistance and lower expected arc fault current magnitudes. I would also like to point out that the new model provides consistent results when it comes to the effect of the electric configurations. The BCBB case, next the BCB configuration, the red curve here represents the HCB, followed by the vertical open air results, and last, as I mentioned, this solid dark curve represents the HOA. Also noted is that we see a constant behavior which shows that the current becomes closer towards the short circuit current as the system voltage increases, yet it never gets past a value which would violate the physical expected behavior of the arc current. Next, I would like to talk a little bit about the behavior of the model at different short circuit current values and also in the medium voltage part of the model. So these two charts will give us an example of what happens when we simulate the arc current behavior as a function, this time not of voltage, but in terms of available short circuit current. We can see the available short circuit current for this particular simulation is uh, charted with this dotted uh, red solid curve. And uh, as we can see over here, this family of curves represents the new IEEE 1584 2018 results. Like I mentioned before, the BCBB configuration will yield consistently the highest magnitude of full current and on the lower end the HOA configuration. Somewhere in between we'll have the HCB, BCB, and VOA configurations. Next, we can see that also as the current increases, 
we have a less of a difference in the results when we shift towards the medium part of, part of the model, medium voltage part of the model. In this case, we have a 2.7 kV, 95 millimeter gap for this particular simulation. And here we can see two, two items and for which I would like you to understand, uh, especially as you get ready to implement this new model in, in the upcoming months for your system studies. First, we can see the available voltage short circuit current represented by this dotted solid red color plot. Right below, this magenta plot, that dashed magenta plot represents the BCB and BOA IEEE 1584 2002 results for the arc current. We know that it is physically impossible for an arc flash within an enclosure and outside of an enclosure in open air to yield exactly the same amount of arc current. The presence of the box and the enclosure will change the length of the arcs and therefore the arc resistance and the arc current magnitude. We can see that that behavior is not expected physical arc behavior. And therefore, when we look now at the IEEE 1584-2018 results, we consistently see that we still honor the expected behavior of the, uh, of the arc flash event in terms of arc current, where the BCBB current still is the highest magnitude, the lowest magnitude HOA, and the results are different depending on whether there is a barrier or no barrier and whether there is a box or no box. This is a, a major improvement in the modeling of the arc current and it will result in, the, in a more accurate simulation of arc flash events for different types of configurations within the electrical equipment. As we saw in the previous slides, the arc current will yield some significant differences depending on what voltage and what gaps and what configurations are found to be present within our systems. Similarly, the arc current variation, which is defined as a probabilistic change in the measure arc current between a sample of similar tests, can add variation to the magnitude of the current uh, measured in, in an actual arc flash event. The working group uh, understood that the arc current variation is a function of the voltage, the short circuit current, the gap, and the electrode configurations, and of course with a lesser impact, perhaps the atmospheric pressure, the elevation, the temperature uh, can impact this arc current variation. However, based on the available data, uh, the new IEEE 1584-2018 model includes an arc current variation which is variable, not fixed like the 2002 model, and it carries from the low voltage at 208 volts all the way up to 15 kV in the medium part of the model. So there will be two significant differences in the application of the arc current variation in the new model. First, the variation is not constant, it's a function of the application voltage or the operating voltage. And second, variation is considered in the medium voltage part of the model. So just to go back into the history of the standard, we all know, and we have used this, especially if you have done power system analysis studies or arc flash studies using ETAP. Uh, as we remember, the IEEE 1584-2002 had a very simplistic model for the application of our current variation. Simply reduce the current by 15% or take 85% of the original arc current and redo the calculation a second time to see if that effect produced higher incident energy. We know that that has been superseded because the 
1584 working group found that there is still variation in the measure our current at higher voltages. This chart shows the percent variation in the measure R current as a function of the system voltage. Each one of these red diamond shapes or annotations represents a test result for a similar voltage level, similar gap, and similar short circuit current. And as we can see in the low voltage tests, the variation in the expected R current could be as high as 24 to 25 percent. Around the 4160 or 5 kV application part of the model, the variation could be as high as 4 percent or 4.5 percent. And last, on the 15 kV part of the model, the variation could be somewhere in the ballpark of 2.5 to 3 percent. So in order not to disregard these findings, a model was developed which accounts for the variation for each of the five available electrode configurations. And as we can see in this slide, the new IEEE 1584 2018 model will give the flexibility for the engineers to account for the variation on the HOA curve, which is shown as the upper value in this chart, which is the percent variation as a function of voltage, and of course the variation of other configurations like BCB or BCBB. One physical item that we can note from this chart is that, as expected, the horizontal open air electrode configurations tends to show tends to have the highest variation or possible variation, and the BCBB configuration tends to have a much lower variation which again follows with the expected arc physical behavior uh, based on the observations of the testing performed. Next, I would like to discuss another major improvement in the IEEE 1584-2019 model, which is the enclosure size correction factor. Before I explain the actual results by looking at charts, and simulations of the model, I would like to just refresh our concept of the effect of reflectivity in terms of incident energy in the event of an arc flash event. This particular slide shows the condition where there is an open air arc and pretty much there is a spherical model which represents the radiation of thermal energy away from the arc point. Of course, we know that when we place uh, the arc fault within an enclosure, the enclosure itself will reflect some of that energy towards the front of the equipment. And there's one more item that I'd like you to keep in mind before we go to the observe the actual results and the effect of the enclosure size correction factor, which is depending on where this arc flash event is placed, whether it's placed towards the back of the enclosure or if it's placed closer towards the front end, that condition will tend to also either increase or decrease the amount of energy that is reflected towards the front and where the calorimeters are placed. Electrodes placed closer towards the front end may actually tend to, sh to have some other degrees of freedom where the radiation energy can escape towards the top and bottom of the box and therefore produce less energy at the calorimeters placed in front of the equipment. Of course, we know that the IEEE 1584 2002 model was based on three different, three different box sizes, and we now know that the 2018 model is based on three plus another three uh, il box sizes or enclosure sizes, which makes it a total of six sizes available. Here's an example of two larger box sizes, a 30 by 45 by 30 inch uh, enclosure, where the first parameter is the height, next one is the width, and then last one is the depth. This slide shows the actual 1584-2018 enclosure correction factor effect for a BCB configuration. 
The main items that I like you to keep in mind as you apply the model is that you have to classify the enclosure sizes into three different groups. The enclosures that have an opening front end area of less than 400 inch square will have a normalized correction factor equal to one, therefore there is no reduction in the incident energy. Enclosures with an opening area larger than 400 inch square all the way up to 2400 inch square will experience a reduction in incident energy because as we now understand bigger opening sizes allow the energy to escape in different directions and therefore not concentrate towards the person in front of the equipment. Last, enclosure sizes with an opening area bigger than 2400 inch square will have a conservative assumption and therefore will show a constant value at the last measured uh, opening size of 2400 inch square. I like to note before I move away from this slide that each of the three enclosed electrode configurations have separate correction factors. Uh, and here is an example of only the BCB, but the HCB and BCBB also have similar equations and considerations. Before I close out the enclosure size correction factor discussion, I'd like to mention also that the depth also plays a factor, but only in the low voltage part of the model. We see here that it is possible that the incident energy produced or the results of the incident energy of the IEEE 1584-2018 model may actually increase as the opening area increases if the enclosure depth is less than, less than or equal to 204 millimeters. If that is the case, we'll see the opposite behavior um, than when the opening area reaches the 400 inch square threshold and then it starts to decrease as the opening uh, front end becomes bigger. This is uh, is clearly described and will be fully applied in the power system analysis uh, model in ETAP. And of course if the enclosure depth is greater than 204 millimeters we follow the previous chart which I showed where if the opening area is less than 400 inch square the uh, enclosure size is kept equal to 1. The enclosure size correction factor effect is kept equal to 1 or there's no effect. Another main area of interest and perhaps some concern is the application limits on the low voltage end of the new IEEE 1584 2018 model. What we used to call the 208 or 240 volt 125 kVA exception in the previous uh, IEEE 1584 2002 model. Bottom line is that this uh, criteria has been revised and it is different. Additional configurations such as BCBB used in testing revealed that arcs actually can be sustained at much lower short circuit current values than what was found in the original 2002 standard. It is difficult to determine an absolute lower end arc sustainability condition or point. We gotta remember that the model was developed based on lab test setups and not based on actual equipment testing. The new statement on low voltage sustainability was derived based on additional testing performed in low voltage test configurations including three phase, single phase, and also including copper and aluminum to an extent. Uh, also, conductor materials such as aluminum may be less common in the voltage equipment but are still not part of this guideline and may also have some factor in the arc sustainability question. Bottom line, the new low voltage sustainability statement in IEEE 1584 says Sustainable arcs are less likely in three-phase systems operating at 240 volts nominal or less with an 
available current below 2000 amps. If you remember, the previous IEEE 1584 2002 set that limit closer to 10,000 amps. Uh, if you equate 240 volts at 125 kVA. So if you interpret this statement, it may be necessary to perform the arc flash analysis at much lower fault currents than before. Therefore, there will be higher requirements on calculations and more work to be done because some of these systems may have been omitted based on the previous statement. However, there are good news, and the good news are that some of the over-conservatism, which was found to be unnecessary in the previous 2002 low-voltage model, was removed and corrected or refined in the IEEE 1584-2018 model. Therefore, as can be seen, this orange curve represents the results between 2,000 amps and 10,000 amps in terms of incident energy for the new arc flash model. The new results show that the incident energy at in the, under these conditions are much lower than were predicted with the over-conservative assumptions that were being used in the 2002 model. This is good news because now even though we have to calculate the energy at much lower currents, the result will still be far less uh, over-conservative and it will be to much more acceptable levels uh, than before. As we are making our way towards the end of the theoretical and background part of this webinar, I'd like to spend a few minutes talking about what I already mentioned is in my opinion perhaps the most critical step in the application of the IEEE 1584 2018 standard which is the identification of electrode configurations in actual equipment. The electrode configuration is the first step in the application of the model. Matching the electrode configuration to actual equipment can be challenging because of different situations as, as will become apparent in the next few slides. The effect of magnetic fields influence the trajectory of the plasma, the molecular cloud, and other ejected materials from the arcs. Therefore, changing the effect uh, of the heat transfer towards the personnel working on that equipment. Such magnetic field influence could be difficult to determine in actual equipment. However, based on the best practice and based on the opinion of the IEEE 1584 working group, there are some equipment which can be classified with some examples which are available in the new IEEE 1584 standard, draft D6, which was obtained from IEEE for the purpose of this presentation. And there's a table in this new guideline, table nine, which presents a good starting point for engineers to be able to start this identification process of these electric configurations in actual equipment. Another thing that I want to mention real quick and that we may be able to see once we look at the software is that there in fact it is possible to have more than one electric configuration in any one location or enclosure and therefore this may need to be considered in the calculation. Table 9 shows an example of what we call BCB. So here is an example of the actual test setup and here is the example of an actual enclosure with a low voltage molded case circuit breaker highlighting the bottom of the breaker since the incoming source on the top side and this location would be considered BCB. Next we look at the same example but now talking in the context of BCBB where the standard shows that this location, if the arc fault occurs here, would, could be most likely considered because of the presence of the molded case uh, barrier it, or the breaker itself could be considered now a BCBB condition. 
This uh, example of table nine shows what could be considered as an HCV, uh, in which you have the uh, metal clad medium voltage switch gear compartment without the presence of the breaker in there, and you have the stabs of the breaker uh, exposed. If these conductors, as is shown, are directly po pointing towards the front of the equipment, that could be considered as an HCV configuration. And if any energized work is performed on this condition, then the HCV configuration could be selected for this particular location. VOA could be a little bit more difficult to identify uh, and typically has been used for overhead conductors and other types of uh, exposed uh, bus bars in power distribution systems. This is an example of what could be considered as a VOA operating case. Of course, we must remember that open air uh, distribution equipment could be better modeled using the ArcFault module. This is an example of the HOA configuration, which shows three protruding staves connectors on the back of the transformer, on a, perhaps a pan-mounted transformer. This is what we could consider an HOA configuration. Further examples, uh, and then further elaborating on what I mentioned about the possibility of having two electric configurations in any one enclosure, here we can see on the line side the potential placement uh, of a location which could be considered as BCBB. And then on the load side of these breakers, because we could have the BCB configuration present. Therefore, uh, we may have to choose or select more than one configuration to be able to determine the most uh, conservative incident energy calculation for any, any one location. Examples of equipment which was previously modeled as BCB and now can be modeled as BCBB. As you can see, the top, the top of this breaker could be considered now a BCBB configuration. The bottom fed part, the bottom output of the con connectors and the cables will be look considered a BCB. In this case, there's two configurations within this particular enclosure. The same could be shown on this image on the right-hand side where we have potentially a BCV configuration and a BCBB configuration on the bottom. Further examples of other equipment which could be considered either as HCB or HOA. Two examples would be grounding staffs for grounding uh, e electrical equipment. Uh, this enclosure clearly shows the protruding staffs towards the opening and this configuration could definitely be considered as an HCV. Another example could be pad-mounted transformers, which could perhaps with the uh, side walls and top covers closed could be modeled as HCV with them open, could qualify more as an HOA configuration. Examples of VOA, which we understand uh, still existed in the 2002 model, so therefore, as we can see, some um, bus bars, exposed bus bars, could be modeled as VOA if the arc fault was to occur on this location, as I'm highlighting currently in this image. OK, so now I'd like to start, without further re redo, the presentation of how all these concepts and fundamentals uh, on how the new model behaves, how it's actually fitted into power system analysis software, and in our case, our ETAP software. So as we can see on this particular slide, we have a representation of a medium voltage metal clad switch gear with two breakers, a source breaker and a load breaker. And um, as we can see, there is other equipment like potential transformers, PTs. There is instrumentation, elements. 
uh, which may contain also overcurrent relays. There are CT connections. There's the actual bus locations, and there may be grounding trans uh, elements also connected in the equipment in different enclosures. Previous versions of the standard only allowed us to select the orientation, either BOA or BCB. And, and of course, we are talking about enclosed equipment, so this will be considered as BCB. And furthermore, just to specify the gap and the correct X factor, and that will be all the information required. And all of these enclosures would then be modeled with a uniform size without regards to the potential variations in energy which could come from the different enclosure sizes. Of course, now we know that this one-line diagram represents an actual switchgear equipment in which every enclosure containing some of these protective devices or instrumentation elements may be of different sizes. As we can see right here, the main circuit breaker enclosure is a 30 by 30 by 25 inch um, dimension. The load breaker is of similar size, 30 by 30 by 25. However, the enclosures which contain the potential transformer is now a 30 by 24 by 25, less open in area. And the instrumentation locations where we have our meters and overcurrent devices included there for the protection of the system are actually much smaller and now can be of 22 by 24 by 12 with a significant decrease in the depth and also a significant decrease in the opening area of the enclosure. And as now we know and understand, these smaller area enclosures, opening area enclosures can tend to produce and reflect more energy towards the front uh, of the equipment. Uh, further examples of this with the actual enclosures open show that here is our instrumentation area where perhaps we may not even have direct contact to the bus. Therefore, with different voltage levels, which could range in the 120 to 240 volts AC, uh, we may have different assumptions on how to calculate the energy using the new low voltage part of the model. Similarly, we can have uh, the actual PT compartment analyzed using different enclosure sizes and different depths in the in the in the uh, elements. Further examples of this and other enclosures that are of different sizes include the load breaker and the compartment below the load breaker will be connected to the feeder cable. As we can see, here's the compartment and here is the lower compartment. Each one of these elements may have a different con con electric configuration and a different dimension. Therefore, the new guideline provides all these options for engineers to be able to model the equipment more accurately than before. Yet, the software will include options to allow for a minimum amount of data entry and also will provide typical values based on the guidelines provided in the new standard. Another area which was typically confused is the actual bus compartment. If so far we have been looking only at the access through the front end of the equipment, however, as we all know, there, are, there may be tasks which may involve inspecting the equipment from the sides or the back if we have rear access to the equipment. And under those conditions, there may be situations where the bus could be modeled as a separate compartment of different sizes and of course with potential uh, electric configurations which may even involve the HCB configuration as is shown in this image. Further examples of uh, enclosures with, with the bus bars or without the bus bars. Once placing the bus bars in this enclosure, we could have them oriented as HCV and therefore have higher incident energy results. At this point, before I introduce the IEEE 1584 arc flash calculator, I would like to show you where in ETAP we now define the new IEEE 1584 2018 model.
As we can see in this project that I have uh, prepared for this webinar, we have the system which represents the actual equipment configuration shown during the electric configuration identification part of the presentation. We have a 15 kV incoming service, stepping down to a 4160 power distribution system, and finally a 480 volt uh, low voltage switcher. In this particular system, we'll place different faults, which we can use to actually observe the differences between IEEE 1584 2002 and the new IEEE 1584-2018. Before we get into some simulations, I'd like to show you how the new uh, version of the guideline has been integrated into ETAP. I would like to start with the study case editor. As we can see in the study case, the new method simply receives a new option on the uh, method page. And um, I would also like to mention at this point that the 2002 method will remain within ETAP for a few years until all the current projects have been completed. And uh, we will add the new 2018 method for the next version of ETAP due out a couple of months from now. So as I was saying before, the, uh, there's a new option called IEEE 1584 2018. Uh, and in the same panel, we have also the our current variation. And as you can see, different than uh, the 2002, where the threshold for variation was at 1000 volts with a fixed value of 85% or 15% reduction. We have now the application of the new model where there is no particular value since it is dynamically calculated based on the operating system voltage. And also there is a different threshold for the uh, between the medium voltage and low voltage parts of the model. Furthermore, as I mentioned during the uh, uh, slides, we have a different way to implement the incident energy for low voltage equipment or this sustainability threshold for low voltage equipment. As we can see now, the new limits are only expressed in terms of current and the default value as a threshold has been set to 2000 amps. You can also set up a higher value as before where you can specify perhaps four calories for 5K and so on and so forth. But by default, we uncheck this and we calculate anything higher than 2000 amps. Basically, as far as the method page, the integration of the new r -flash model is not that different from that of the previous model. Where the bigger, change, bigger changes are, are located in the actual parameter page and in the actual uh, gaps and working distances and actual physical parameters that are required for the calculation. So if we move on to the parameter page, we can see that we can still apply global, typical IEEE 1584 for 2018 data, or individually place data within the buses, and something that I'll preview in a few minutes, which is called the enclosure editor. So let's take a look at some of this uh, typical data and how it is arranged uh, within the program. As we can see, this uh, editor that just opened is called ArcFlash Analysis Data, and it contains uh, three options. One of them is typical data for the 2002 model, which still contains voltage, equipment types, electrode configurations, which are only BCB and VOA, gaps, and all these other parameters that are applied only to the 2002 version. Of course, we are talking about the 2018 and the minute we select that new option, we can see that we have uh, parameters such as the uh, height, width, depth, working distance, and the main PD isolation, which is a parameter that ETAB uses to determine whether you can consider that enclosure to be isolated from nearby enclosures. And therefore, the incident energy calculations will consider uh, that to determine the uh, worst case incident and energy. As we can see, any one of our equipments, for example, this uh, 208 to 1 kV switchgear could now be set up by default as BCPB, uh, or uh, going to other locations, for example, 15 kV 
uh, switch gears could then be selected as either BCBB or HCB. Bottom line, this is just the initial set of typical data that brings data into the individual elements for a quick initial calculation. So uh, just to summarize this editor before I move on to the rest of the features, we have the parameters that we learned during the presentation, including gaps, the height, the width, the depth, and of course, we no longer use the X factor, so it's said to not, not applicable, the working distance and the isolation of the enclosures. Let me move away from this editor and let's go to other locations. Um, and before I close the study case, I'd just like to mention that as far as adjustments, standards, pre-fall voltage values, and other options in the program, they're all still applicable because in fact, short circuit remains the same and it hasn't changed because of a new arc flash guideline. So let's take a quick look at a particular bus. We double click on the bus and we will see that on the rating page, we have also integrated the uh, new uh, fields. So in this case, we can see under the arc flash parameter page that we have uh, fields like the electric configuration, which are either BCB, BCBB, or HCB. We have uh, added also a field for aluminum or copper or electrode material, which I will quickly discuss in a few minutes. And, and, and I will also mention the effect that we can uh, add based on the selection of this conductor type. We see the height, the width, the depth, and uh, other um, shock protection parameters that are related to the shock analysis, shock risk assessment, if you care to use that along with the thermal incident energy calculations. On the arc flash page of the bus, we still have a very similar uh, setup with the exception that you have a method uh, field which now lists the IEEE 1584 2018 as a calculation method to indicate which method was selected to give the localized results at this location for a fault on this bus. Remaining options such as the TCC plot energy, the plot arc and current will now be based on the new equations, uh, but they will still have similar, similar operation. Before I run a uh, few simulations, I would like to introduce one more editor that it's new to this version of ETAP and which is necessary for us to be able to implement all the new capabilities of this uh, new IEEE 1584 guideline. This editor that I just opened is called the enclosure editor. And essentially, it allows us to be able to uh, define the characteristics of every location enclosure where we could have an arc fault event. So as I described during the presentation slides, we saw as an example a 15 kV switch gear, which uh, had several enclosures of different sizes, different depths, di different opening areas. And as we can see here, we have an enclosure ID labeled as bus, side access, grounding location, load breaker enclosures, main CV compartment, PT compartment, or instrumentation and locations. Uh, this will be basically the simple, plain and simple, the name of the uh, location at which you're doing the R flash analysis within this particular switch gear. We also have a field called the enclosure type, which will be either the bus, either a source PD or protected device, a load protected device, or the load side of a load protected device, as I showed also during the, the examples on the slides. And we have something new, a new concept, which is instrumentation type enclosure, which will allow us to apply different criteria when calculating the incident energy within instrumentation type compartments, where the fault current values and the voltage values may not be within the actual calculation range of the arc flash models that we have available. Of course, now you have the capability to select what electric configuration you want at any one of these locations. Of course, as we saw in the example, 
the bus side access panels, once removed, expose the electrical personnel to a potential horizontal conductor in the box configuration. So therefore, we can select that location as HCV. Grounding location, the grounding uh, uh, connections that are available on that switchgear can also be selected as HCV. The load breaker can be BCB. Main compartment can either be HCV or BCBB, depending on whether the breaker is present or not for the energized tasks or that are performed. And then uh, the PT compartment, compartment, which could be selected as BCV or any other selection based on the uh, identification process on the equipment. We follow that with the individual height, width, depth for every one of the enclosures. We have the volume and also information about the enclosure isolation, which is specific to every compartment. With this capability, you could specify a specific isolation for individual locations and perhaps assume that the location closest, like the PT compartment, closest to the main protective device could be isolated or not isolated, et cetera, et cetera. So that's also a very nice feature to be able to specify isolation down to a individual cubicle or lo a location level. On the parameter staff of this new editor, uh, we have uh, another set of parameters, which include a new capability, which is to be able to identify the working distance per location. Now we can see that if you're working on infrared measurements, perhaps on the bus side, and you're accessing that panel, perhaps you can use a 36 inch working distance there. If you're working on the PT compartment, 36 inches maybe, or 24, you can define that automatically per location. And then in the near future, just like we have done for ETAP ArcFault, we'll allow multiple sets of working distances for various tasks and give the energy values accordingly. Also, another great enhancement which is necessary to be able to implement this new guideline is the ability to define the gaps, which can vary depending on the type of compartments. Of course, if you're in the PT compartment versus the instrumentation compartment or the load breakers versus the grounding locations, the, this, the gap or the distance between the conductors can vary significantly and we can specify that in the program. Next, we have some few options of which I'm just going to quickly mention them, like the ability to specify light, pressure, and overcurrent protective device protection at every location, operational time delays, user-defined current values, clearing times, and several other nice new features which are not necessarily part of the new standard, but are also enhancements that are packaged along this new version of the calculation. So now that I've given you a preview of this uh, enclosure editor, I'd just like to show you that, in fact, you can go to a different location and see the uh, individual details of every enclosure within that piece of equipment, and also for low voltage with different characteristics now more applicable to your low voltage equipment. The last thing that I would like to mention on this particular editor is that you can also create templates. And this is a very important capability because you can then select a template, create it, add it to your template list, and then reuse it for any similar piece of equipment within your facility. That allows the ability to customize the, the equipment one time and then reuse it for similar substations throughout your facility. That's going to be a great time-saving capability that will allow us to implement this method in a more accurate manner and also allow us to have less uh, man hours to spend during the analysis. Okay, so now that we have seen uh, some of the major highlights of the implementation of this new model, what I would like to do is show you a couple of simulations. So I will go ahead and run uh, a simulation, a uh, couple of simulations, one of them is a simulation using the new 2018 standard and another simulation also using the 2002 to be able to compare what kind of differences we see in the results and uh, and see the differences in other areas. Of course, as far as the 
uh, one line diagram, display results. Arc flash is still arc flash. Uh, you still have the instant and energy, the full clearing time, a distance, the currents at different locations through the PDs, just like any one of us that are familiar with ETAP will easily recognize. Of course, uh, there are also uh, other ways to look at the data, like the ArcFlash Report Analyzer, which I'm going to open right now. And in here, we can quickly see that the new method is fully supported within the analyzer, of course. And we were also a still able to compare quickly uh, between older reports and new, uh, new reports. So if you want to do an evaluation of on how the incident energy has changed uh, between the last time that you ran your study using the 2002 version and now that you're going to rerun it using the 2018, you can do a quick evaluation of how many locations uh, will show different results. In this case, we see uh, the, that for any location in this particular system, using the 2002, for example, we have 9.68, here we have 19 calories. Uh, 13 versus 13, so this location didn't experience much of a change. 7.86 versus 7, not much of a change. 9.68 versus 19, there's an, uh, another uh, change which is significant. And just out of curiosity, we can observe that that location happens to be the bus side access panel or enclosure. So not only are we looking at the faults at, at a bus like we were doing before, but now we can do 20 or 30 different sub-calculations for any one piece of equipment that you define within the program. And as we, as we understood before, we had defined this uh, side access panel as a potential HCV configuration. Therefore, the incident energy at that location can be considered to be substantially higher. My time uh, with this webinar is almost running out and I could really spend um, probably another two or three hours going into all the details on this very robust and uh, more accurate calculation method, which is indeed more complex. And uh, however, fully implemented into ETAP and uh, as you guys will have been able to see over the last few minutes, uh, the integration in the program makes it easy to understand and be able to compare and be able to transition over to this uh, new method. So let me close this uh, analyzer and let me just show you one more final item, which I, I also promised at the beginning of my webinar, which is the ArcFlash calculator for 1584-2018. So if you click on this calculator item, uh, which is part of the new version of uh, of ETAB with the 2018 version of the standard implemented. We'll see that we get this very powerful uh, calculator tool, which allows us to do a quick comparison of the results between the 2002 method, where we can see 480 volt, 32 millimeter gap, 20K volt to full current, 24 inch working distance. We get a corresponding energy of 4.7 cent, 4.77 calories per centimeter square. If you compare that to the 2018, we get 4.26. So as you can see, this is, allows you to very quickly get results on the spot for any one location. And at the same time, it allows you to switch between the different uh, electric configurations, which may be present within your equipment and do analysis on each one of them. Also, the tool is fully interactive and graphical, and it allows you to simulate what is the effect of reducing or increasing the working distance. And as we can see, as I move my uh, working distance plane towards the arc flash boundary point, and uh, there we'll get a green color which symbolizes 1.2 calories per centimeter square. And as I come closer, I will get into the eight calorie, 25 calorie, and eventually 40 calorie range. Of course, uh, we can also do this by using contour plots, which shows us the locations at which we reach those energy values uh, at different uh, locations. So, so it's, in essence, we have multiple calculations done throughout the entire approach uh, distances to this piece of equipment.
At the same time, you can do instant energy versus working distance plots or instant energy versus fault, fault clearing time or arc duration plots. As you can see, the longer the fault persists within your system or the longer, longer the exposure time is, the more incident energy is released. Last, I'd like to show you a couple of tabs on this calculator, which are the method tab, where you can specify uh, incident energy correction factors for different electrode material types, copper or aluminum. And you can also specify correction factors for three-phase to single-phase conversions. You can also do a batch import process, and this could be very useful for situations in which we have multiple identical locations, and we want to do a single calculation and duplicate the results for several locations. We could simply uh, specify a import data location where we have a set of uh, values which represent those locations and we can take, quickly take a look at that import data file. We can see we have uh, a Excel file that has 30 generic locations with different four current values, number of faces, gaps, working distances, different enclosure sizes, correction factors, uh, uh, clearing times, and pre fall voltage values. Once all this information is import it, like I just did, into the, into the calculator, all I have to do is select an output file and simply calculate. And just like that, it's actually calculated the 29 entries that were submitted, and we can view the results. Generic locations, we'll see the arc current the minimum arc current with the reduced current variation, incident energy at different working distances, working distance one, the arc flash boundary at different uh, threshold values, either at 1.2 calories or 4 calories, or at etc. etc. And then we'll have the en enclosure size correction factor, we'll have all the results that are provided through the analyzer listed in this particular output report. So as we can see, including this calculator, the full integration into the existing calculation engine, into the study case, and the data selections options for typical values, we see that the transition from the old 2002 ArcFlash model into the new 1584 2018 model is not going to be uh, a difficult one. We've been working on this process for the last uh, year and a half and we'll be really happy for you guys to be able to have this uh, new version and to use it within the next uh, couple of months. At this point uh, I would like to thank you for uh, attending this uh, webinar and uh, I would like to uh, say thanks for the opportunity that you have uh, given us to, to spend this uh, hour, 20 minutes with you guys and uh, hopefully you found this webinar to be very informational and also useful as you move forward to applying this new ArcFlash model in the near future. Thank you very much.